In this video, we'll be talking about the four money mistakes that you must avoid in your 20s. I wish I knew these things before I was 20 because if I did, my financial life would be so much better right now. But look, I'm 22 right now and I don't claim to know everything about money, but I've made many mistakes with my own money that I wish I haven't and so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and not make them yourself. And after making these mistakes, I became obsessed with managing my money and I've read tons of articles and watch countless videos from people who are over their 20s and who share their opinions and advice on the money mistakes that 20 year olds should avoid. And I've compiled them into the four mistakes that you should avoid if you want to be financially successful in your 30s. And if you just avoid the first mistake that I'm gonna talk about right here, you're gonna be better off than 96% of people when it comes to personal finance. All right, so before we jump into it, if you're new to the channel, we post videos here every week about saving money, making money, and investing your money in the simplest way possible so that you can have control over your money and live a better life. We're on a mission to help young people have more control over their money and personal finances, so we'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button so that this video gets pushed out and seen by more people who need to see it. A small gesture really goes a long way and we really appreciate it. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. The first money mistake I wish I avoided sooner was to not have a budget or a plan written down. Now I know that when some of you hear the word budget, you instantly roll your eyes and think that it's not gonna work, it's too rigid, and I'm never gonna stick to it, but hear me out for a few seconds. If you don't know where you want to go, then it doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you saved. And if you don't have a plan about where you want to be in the next three, five, 10 years from now, then it's almost impossible to be good with your money. If you know me or if you watch my previous videos, you'll know that in the past, I would always blow my money as soon as I made it. I would spend money on stuff that I didn't really need because I didn't have a financial plan. And I didn't have a vision of what I wanted my life to look like in the next five to 10 years. And without a plan, it was a lot easier for me to spend money on stuff I didn't need because I didn't know the cost of wasting this money. Now, after learning about how important a financial plan is, I can say that I'm a lot more optimistic when it comes to my financial future. And I have a reason to cut back on my spending, save my money and invest the rest. I've recently been using our very own TMF budgeting template and it's already been so useful to me. But you don't need anything complicated. All you need is a pen and paper and sit down and think about where you want to be when you're 23, 25 or 28 years old. Do you want to buy a new car when you're 23? Or maybe you want to move out of your parents' place? Do you want to get married when you're 28 or buy a new house then? All of these things are different for different people, which is why it's so important for you to sit down and write out exactly what your goals are so that you don't get influenced by other people who tell you what you need instead of what you actually need. If you don't have your own plan or values written down, then it's a lot easier to be influenced by other people like your family, your friends, telling you that this is what you want and that this is what you should be aiming for. But in reality, everyone has different goals and different milestones that they want to hit in life. So you need to write down exactly what those goals are so that you're more clear. Treat your financial plan or budget like how a country treats its constitution. Always refer to it when making big financial decisions and it's like a map that helps you navigate through your financial life. You can change it from time to time as you learn and grow and figure out what are the things that you want, but it's so important to have this piece of paper with you and it can even save you from making big financial mistakes that can put you in a really bad spot. The second money mistake to avoid in your 20s is to have high living expenses. So the thing is this, when you're in your 20s, this is the only time in your entire life where it's okay to be broke. Think about it. The broke millennial or the broke young person is a common thing that we hear about today. People expect you to be broke when you're in your 20s. But as soon as you get older and when you hit your 30s, it's a lot harder to tell your family and friends that you're still broke and you're still living with your parents. We humans are social creatures. We will always be influenced by that part of our brain that wants to fit in and be accepted by society. And when you're in your 20s, Society will accept you if you're broke. Not so much so when you're 30 or 40, so use this to your advantage. Even if you're making lots of money and you can buy the latest gadgets or the latest sports cars, don't do it. Live like you're broke, invest your money, and when you're in your 30s and 40s, then your money will grow thanks to compound interest if you invest it properly, and then you can show off if that's what you want. 
What you want to do in your 20s is to keep your living expenses at the minimum. Going back to our first money mistake to avoid in your 20s, draft up a budget or a plan and find out exactly how much money you need to live every month. If your living cost is too expensive, then consider getting a roommate or living with your parents because there's no shame about being broke in your 20s because people expect that. Once you have the exact amount of money that you need, stick to it and don't increase your lifestyle even if you start earning more money. Invest the extra money you make and continue to live like you're broke so that maybe one day if you want to retire early in your 30s or 40s, you can choose to do so while other people still have to work for another 20 years before they retire. And living below your means has a huge advantage when it comes to setting you up for success, which is my next point. The third money mistake to make in your 20s is to never take any amount of significant risk. Look, I get it, not all of us are entrepreneurial and have the stomach to take big risk. Some of us are more risk averse and we like to play it a little bit safe, which is okay. But the thing you have to remember is this, there is no better time to take big risk than in your 20s. Imagine this, you're in your 20s and you decide to move out of the country because you want to get a new job. Or maybe you graduated with a law degree, but you kind of want to pursue a different career because you're curious. If you screw up, the worst thing that could happen is that you lose all your money, you have to go back to live with your parents, and maybe you have to take up that job that you hate. But that's okay. You're in your 20s and you have a lot more time to recover, to rebound, and to readjust. Now imagine the same thing happening, but you're in your 30s and you have a mortgage to pay, a car loan to pay, or maybe even a family to feed. If you screw up, the consequences are a lot more severe because you have a lot of commitments and there are even people relying on you. Going back to my second point about living like you're broke, you can start establishing a baseline of how much money you need to live and everything above that, you can use that money to take big risk. If you've ever wanted to start a business or a blog or a nonprofit, now is the best time because you have nothing to lose. The founders of Apple went all in and created one of the most valuable companies in the world because they did it when they had nothing to lose. They knew that if they failed, they could start again or if worst case scenario happens, they could always go back to their jobs. Now I get it. It's scary. The worst thing is to lose everything you have and start over from scratch. But it's a lot better to experience that first when you're young in your 20s as opposed to when you're in your 30s, when you have a lot of commitments. Now the worst thing that could happen if you don't take these risks is that you're gonna go into your 30s and 40s and you're gonna always be thinking, what if I did that? And you're gonna feel a bit of regret and resentment and you will never really have tried the things that you really wanted to try because you were just too afraid of taking those big risks when you're 20. Now, it's a lot harder to take on those risks because you have a lot more commitments and people are relying on you. On a side note, I encounter a few people who always think that, you know, I just finished my bachelor's degree and I should probably do my master's first before I get a job. And look, I can't tell you which path to take because your goals are very different from mine, but I can tell you that school and college and university will always be there. They're not going away. And in fact, they might even be more accessible in the future when everything goes online. But your passion, your drive, and those opportunities that come to you, those things won't last forever. But school and university will always be there for you if you want to continue your education. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is the unfair advantage that young people have. This advantage is so huge that even the old rich billionaires wish that they could have what we have. This advantage is called time. And when you combine time with compounding effects, you will get massive results. Everything we do and everything we want to do takes time. To learn a skill, to build a relationship, or to build wealth, all of this requires time. And time is the one thing that you can't just skip past or buy more of. Time is the medium in which everything moves and progresses. So the money mistake that people make in their 20s, including me, is thinking that time is abundant while money is scarce, where in reality, it's supposed to be the other way around. I get it, some of you are busy all day, you're working several jobs, and you're also in university. But you can use time to invest your money and let compound interest work for you. I'm gonna show you a quick graph here about how much money you can make with compound interest when you're in your 20s, as opposed to when you're in your 30s and 40s. You simply cannot rush certain results and things take time. So be aware of this in your 20s and use this time like your life depends on it. 
because it does. Your life is made out of time. And if you're not busy working several jobs or being in school, then use this time to learn a new skill or pursuing your hobby just to find out what you like and what you don't like. If you don't have money to invest, then you can invest your time by pursuing anything that interests you. Because look, all the billionaires in the world could buy anything, but they can't buy time. They can buy services that help them save time like hiring a personal chef or a driver but they can't extend their time and we both have the same amount of time every day. So if you really want to get ahead in your 20s, start investing your time wisely and don't waste it on pursuing short-term gains or pleasure. The reason why most people in their 20s don't appreciate the value of time is because the decisions we make when we're 10 to 18 don't really impact where we are right now in our 20s because we have our parents and families supporting us. But the decisions that we make in our 20s Will have a significant impact on where we'll be in life when we're in our 30s. And most of us aren't aware of this because we've never really experienced the long-term consequences of our decisions. And that's why when most people start going into their 30s, all the decisions that they made in their 20s will start showing up and at that point it might be too late to fix it because you have so many things going on. That's why a lot of people in their 30s and in their 40s wish that they've made a certain decision or they wish they haven't done something in their 20s because now they're feeling the effects of the decisions that they made 10 years ago. So this perspective of time and long-term decision making really helped me prioritize my life in my 20s and I hope that this video gives you that same perspective. So those are the four biggest money mistakes that you should avoid in your 20s, in my humble opinion. If you have a plan set out, you'll be able to live below your means. And if you live below your means, you'll be able to take more risk and if you take more risk, you can start investing more of your time and money to things that are actually meaningful to you and make the best decisions that will help you in the long run. If you're in your 20s and you're watching this video, it's safe to say that you care about your financial life and you just want to live a better life without having to worry about money. If that's true, then I recommend you checking out these YouTube channels and blogs because they provide so much value that you can learn from. I personally learn more from the internet than I do in school so don't underestimate the power of relevant information when you apply it to your life. But that's it for me today. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, hit that like button. It really helps push this video out to other people. And if you haven't already subscribed, what are you doing? Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our content. We post every week about how to make money, save your money and invest your money. I'd love to hear in the comments, what are some of the biggest money mistakes that you've made? Doesn't matter whether you're in your 20s, 30s or 40s. I'd love to hear your comments down below and we'd love to share with everyone so that all of us can learn. But other than that, my name is Edley. Thanks for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next video.